Um, so I'll let, let me introduce uh, our next speaker for uh, today. Uh, you've met him already, of course. Uh, Tony Gaggio is from Centrica. Tony is HSC Capability Director, I believe. Um, Tony um, has worked at Centrica for uh, how many years? Five years now. Uh, previously worked for Network Rail and uh, Shell for <coughs> five years. Uh, so um, over to you, Tony. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm the sucker that actually created the um, Sticking Type Off Foundation back in 1988. <laughs> 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 Still been trying to get out of it for something. Years. I've just moved you ever made it. Yeah, and you may have noticed I did something with the last S. Yeah, uh, um, it's not easy, but a big incident that lots and lots of work on it. You've had tripod trees, you've had puzzle analysis trees, you might even get someone like Lord Cullen and apply to it. And we learn a lot from an incident. Yeah. Incidents we have lots of. So, what I'd like to do is first say what we've done in Santa Cruz over the last two years or so in turning to try and get our data right so that we can learn from multiple incidents, not just an incident. And what I'd like to start with is just the basic premise of how incidents occur. Incidents happen because the controls that we put in place do not work. They don't work because people do or don't do something. They do put their seatbelts on, yeah, they don't put their seatbelt on. They don't obey the speed limit. Or they, sometimes they do stuff and sometimes they don't do stuff. We've heard many conversations today that people try to do the right thing. Yeah. Nobody comes to work to get killed. And therefore, the reasons that they are not doing or not, doing or not doing stuff is generally because of the environment preconditions, the conditions around them. The way we structure our business creates those conditions. That's fairly straightforward, but it's really important that if you're going to learn from incidents that you keep that logic in your head. And if you have conversations around the event itself or the immediate cause, you can have conversations that will prevent that incident. If you can create conversations around underlying causes, you might be able to prevent more incidents because those conditions will affect people whether it's in a hurry and they forget to put a seatbelt on, yeah, or they forget to tighten a nut up. <laughs> or they forget to do something else. Or if it's a knowledge base, they don't know how to do something, then there's something else they don't know how to do. Yeah. So the further back along the incident chain, you can create conversations yeah, the better and more chance you've got of actually affecting incidents. Now, in any business, and Centric has no exceptions, you have management meetings. You may call them a management meeting, you may call them a safety meeting, you may call them a governance board, but regularly every month or whatever cycle, you have management meetings where you talk about, say, the HSE. Yeah? So I thought it would really be quite interesting in Centrica to find out in management meetings where were the conversations happening. Now, if I walked into a management meeting and said, I want to listen to your conversations about safety, as a senior HSC person in the business, I'm likely to affect the behaviour of the tribe. You send a strange person in, and the tribe <coughs> behaves differently. So, <coughs> some, not this summer, but some before, I got a 20-year-old summer placement student who looked fairly small and irrelevant and stuff to go and do it for me. Yeah? In fact, she had the brain the size of a planet. The first class, now I've got first class honours from Oxford. It was totally no, 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 I just put in this summer placement student who was studying geography, who didn't actually change the behaviour of the tribe. 
and she sat in those management meetings with a number of our different parts of our business and she mapped the conversations against this model of event, barrier, people, or whatever. And sure enough, you can guess what the result was. Real data from last summer, from summer 2015 of, and each of those different colors is a different part, a different function of our business. Some is the board of governments that does your gas boiler repairs, some is the renewable businesses, some of it was our thermal generation businesses, but actually the structure didn't change much. Then I said to her, will you now go and look at the information? Because, yeah, like any good business, we create masses of dashboards for management meetings with graphs and dashboards and Chris is going and looking at those, probably recognizing some of them, probably telling you which business they come from. So will you kindly look at that and will you do the same mapping? And guess what? So we created masses of information about events, type of incident, injury, with it's getting hell, and they had discussions about events. Are we surprised? Actually not. So at that time, we were changing our management information system, going from an old system to create a new system. So we had the opportunity to structure that information system, that data reporting system, where all of our information goes in, such that we could get stuff out. And of course, we had the system. So I asked them, I said, could we go and check the system and find out what information could we put on the dashboards of underlying causes? And this is what our old system produced for us when we asked it. <laughs> <laughs> but it was in charge of it and pushing to change it at the time, this might be right now. So, okay, we're producing management information about events because we can. We're having conversations in management meetings about events because we can. Yeah? We're not doing anything about the latter half of it because we don't give them the information. So, I grabbed a whole bunch of our HSC people together and we sat down and we started talking about what can we do. And this is fairly familiar to you guys because it's been up there before in some form or another at least once if not twice this afternoon. And it's this concept of triage and events. So we have a reporting, we have 20 to 30,000 events coming into our system. I was at a conference a little while ago, one of them was there. I was going to say how many events it was and the difficulty of doing that. However, the person beforehand said, actually in the last six months I've got 1.8 million events in my system, so I shut up at this point, being very, 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 very small. <laughs> All right. yeah. But we have about under 100 events that are what we would call hypertension and stuff a year. Yeah, we have three, 400 where somebody actually does get hurt. And we have probably 20,000 events where nobody gets hurt, but somebody could have got and what we're trying to do is to take this logic, because if I'm aware from an event, I'll pick one of our hypertension events, I'll do a group cause analysis, I'll come up with a detailed report, I'll come up with multiple causes. Yeah? And I can learn from that. And an industry is quite good at doing that. And there are plenty of consultants out there that can do that for you as well. Yeah, Trifle Beach ones are some of the best ones, but not plug too much. But how do I get 20,000 of those? because it will take a long time to do that. You know, it's three or four man days, a couple of man weeks worth of work to do that. And I've got to do that 20,000 times. I cannot physically do it. So that was the problem. We had to get at least a small amount of information out of it. So we came back quite simply to this. Okay? Accidents happen because controls fail. Controls fail because people do or don't do stuff. The conditions that create that and the underlying causes. If we can codify that simply, we can perhaps get information out of the system as opposed to nothing meets our criteria. Okay? Our potential severity, one to three are the minor going through, four and five being the multiple severity, the higher stuff, and go upwards in severity. So what we want to do is build a system where that 20,000 at the bottom end we just says, well, what's the barrier, what's the type of incident, and what's the cause? What's the classification of the human error? Simple, 
drop downs. What's the type of unsafe acting condition? Is about 18. What's the GEMS classification for those that aren't familiar? Is it slip or lapse? Is it mistake? Is it optimizing violation? Yeah? The, we used exactly the same classification that's in the hearts and minds managing all breaking tools. Is it reckless violations at that point? And all we ask people to do is just pick one of them. One barrier, yeah? one type of unsafe act, and what was that human failure? Nothing more. But if you do that 20,000 times, you're suddenly getting more information. For this latter half, we have the view that actually you ought to take each one and do a detailed analysis and go find out because it's really, really important. And it is for a big event, and it is for something with it, because we all know that you look at that tripod tree, there's more than one barrier that fails when something goes seriously wrong. And there's more than one precondition, and there's more than one underlying causes, but I can't do it 20,000 times. So we resurrected the thing called the means to cause by, which is some of the most common preconditions and their underlying causes. Now, there's a piece of research work done at Leiden University. One of the many PhDs coming out of this loose conglomeration of them there's one there sitting behind you, another PhD, um, who did his PhD in the same area, in, in, in this loose combination of it. And that has come a list. We sat down, I've got 800 years of HSC experience. We said, what are the most likely ones that we know from Centrica? And we programmed that in. Fixed preconditions, and from that, if you pick a precondition, you get about eight, six or eight underlying causes. Pick the one. It also then populates a thing called a basic risk factor. Within the tripod methodology, there are 11 basic risk factors. And rather than asking people, these are all classified. So is it a procedure? Are we creating error-enforcing conditions? Yeah. Is it about maintenance management? There's 11 of these classifications of that. And we programmed that, and we put it in, and we ran some training, and we went live last year. And what's key about this is that we thought not only what to put in, but we thought about how we might take information out before we put it in. <coughs> yeah? I know it sounds logical, but yeah. I've done a, I, I think this was about my sixth um, instant database type recording systems. Yeah, and it was the first one we thought about how we might take stuff out before we put it in. <laughs> I'm, I'm slow at learning, believe me, very slow at learning. And what we said is, look, the way we're going to get stuff out is first you're going to filter the database to decide what you're going to look at. And it could be by business unit, it could be by dates, it could be by process safety instance, it could be by whatever. So you want to be able to filter the database. You then want to be able to analyze it in two sets of breakdowns. So if we can do two sets of breakdowns, we probably can do enough. So I could pull out data that says, between these dates, what is the basic risk factor profile that's in that database? What is the human error that I'm seeing? Or in process safety events, what human error am I seeing? Or whatever. You choose a filter, a breakdown, and then we said, would it be really nice if we could do a second breakdown to see what that happened? So, all I've done now, and what I'd like to show you is just the simple capability of what we can now do with data. Yeah? So for example, if I take Centrica, and I take this basic, uh, take the human error across Centrica this year, and I say, how many events have we had out there which have this type of human error? I've got 6,000 of them where we don't know. Okay. But that's good. Because at least I know we don't know. So it now tells me that one of the things we need to do is actually teach people how to classify human error, which is really quite a useful thing to know. Because if we don't know why, if we don't know whether it was a slip or a lapse, or whether it was a reckless violation, what chance have we got of having any guess of the underlying cause? Absolutely not. So let's crack that first. Now the great advantage is that the system's quite smart in the fact that you can then say, 
take the unknowns out and give you that. So this bottom graph is the top graph, but with the unknowns removed, which actually gives you a bit of decent scale. Yeah. And you can see here that the vast majority of our human errors are slip, slips and lapses. Yeah. But quite interesting, we see quite a number of novel, new, different situations floating around. We actually see um, quite a lot of rule-based, knowledge-based mistakes. They didn't know what to do. And do you know what really got me? You were a little bit surprising and did do with one or two colleagues is this one here. Reckless violations. Remember I said people don't come to work to be hard? Yeah? And then suddenly my database is telling me, do you know, you've got a lot of reckless violations going on in your company. Hmm. Something to look at. I'll come back to that later. Yeah? But it did surprise us when we saw that. And I must admit, when I showed that to my colleagues at the tripod board, they were all up around me. They spotted the reckless violations like a streak of lightning. There is a good reason. The other one, if you want to do just something simple, yeah, look at those basic risk factors. And remember I said that the front end of the 20,000 mark were going up to just the human error? And only on the more serious ones would be going back. So you see the numbers are less, instead of 6,000 at the top. But I've still got over 450 or 1,000 events I can pull that to get this data together from. So we're beginning to start being able to see some stuff that is statistically significant. This is Pancentrica, it includes the US, I haven't filtered by business unit, and if I was doing this for real, I would actually take it down to an individual business unit, like our wind farms or our power stations, and I could do that, it's two seconds to just put the filter in and do it. Yeah, But it's quite interesting to see when you do that. <clears throat> Massive amount of design errors. Quite interesting. Yeah? And interestingly, when you look a bit deeper into those design errors, because you wouldn't see that, or you shouldn't see that on a sophisticated offshore platform or a, or a power station. But a lot of these design errors are in your houses, by the way. And it's where someone's put your boiler. That people can't actually access it properly because they've stuck it in the wrong place because you maybe didn't go to Bridge and Gas to get it fitted in the first place. <laughs> so that's just the plug. <laughs> so I'm now paid for my I'm now paid for the train ticket up here. Yeah. But I can see that. I can go into the base and I can look at that and I can see which part of the company is coming from, what type of stuff is doing that. I was doing this live, I could click on that and I'd have every single of those four hundred and twenty nine events tabled for. So I can now start doing some analysis and create some management information that might change the conversations. <clears throat> because I bet you, you've got some thoughts going on looking at that data already in your heads about how you might want to go and have conversations and analyze, analyze this. And if I stuck up a picture of a man with head injuries and stuff like that, you'd have gone, I've seen all that lot before. Yeah? I see Rob nodding. Oh, that would be kind. Remember I said that at this simple stage was the filter, I've just done year to date here, <coughs> then first stage analysis. Yeah? Well, we can go a little, have a little bit more fun. What we can actually do is take the, and uh, here I've done the GEMS model, and you're not supposed to read it by the way, because otherwise I'd be showing you company data charts and you'd be taking it away. So even when it goes out, it's almost unreadable. But here is the sort of top five unsafe acts where you see hazardous driving conditions being one of our big ones. Yeah? But also, you see these not knowns dominating again. So the not knowns are across the place. So, so ignore the top one, because what I did then was just take the not knowns out of this lot. Yeah? So it gives you a bit more scale. And then on the hazardous driving conditions, you can see quite a lot of slips and lapses. You see a lot of reckless violations, quite a lot of our reckless violations coming from the driving conditions. And when you delve into that, it's the third party stuff which whacks off the wing mirrors of those British gas vans when they're parked, or they come back and someone's decided that they're going to go and uh, they obviously didn't service, our boiler, didn't service their boiler quite well because they keyed the car or whatever. You can start seeing that. The other bit of reckless violations, you said I thought it was really quite unusual that we saw reckless violations because it didn't, it wasn't really, it didn't feel right to me on good people. Yeah? And it came out when I did it by the type of event with some of our customer behaviours. 
Now, I must the vast majority of our British gas customers are absolutely excellent. And when one of our engineers turns up at your house and at six o'clock in the morning you have no hot water, and by one o'clock they're rocking up in there and they're mending their boiler, you get we get great customer response at that stage. When one part of our business that knocks on the door to say, excuse me, I've got a warrant, you haven't paid your gas bill, and I'm coming in to put a prepaid meter and says, ah. Oh, Actually, I won't. I'll call the police to go and I'll shut this cannabis farm down. Surprisingly, um, our customer behaviour tends to not be slip and lapse at this point. Yeah? And when we, so there are parts of our business where you see different violations, different types of human behaviour acting in different incidents. Well, it's logical, and this is only scratching the surface of what we can do. Yeah? This is literally just to scratch the surface. I pulled these together and just pulled a couple of cuts up to just demonstrate the capability of what you're doing. Because the most important thing I want to get across to you is, remember that chart where we have conversations all about events? We can move conversations in management meetings to the left-hand side of that chart and that underlying causes. If we can create management information that creates that type of con a different type of conversation, then we can start creating a different culture in terms of learning principles. But when we turn around and say, hey, you've got to start doing underlying courses and talking about that in management meetings, and you get the answer, could you give us some of the underlying courses? And you go, actually, no, we can't get out of the system. You're not going to have that happen. So it's interesting, which bit do you do first at that stage on that? Interestingly enough, if you just look at the underlying causes, yeah? We have a lot of big problems with people um, insufficiently aware of the environment they're in. And that is a lot of our people going into environments of your houses, by the way. Yeah? Um, Unsearchable working conditions. Yeah? It's, it's two of our biggest underlying cause areas at that stage. And this is covering the whole of British gas that stage. We can also then, if you want to, yeah, you, know, you could put it by the underlying cause and the classification behind that. But you can also say, you know, for this underlying cause here, what sort of human error is that creating? So for the unsuitable, um, unsuitable environment, we're seeing normal situation, normal behaviour. I don't know quite what to do here. That actually links, it makes logical sense. If the environment's unsuitable at that stage, and we're seeing novel types, Violation, novel violations, that makes sense to me. It tells me that, hey, this is beginning to work at that point. Yeah? Um, on the inadequate training and stuff, we're actually seeing lots of slips and lapses coming out. But we're starting this, this is information to start conversations. And that's what's important. I'm getting to the five minute warning, which is a good job of moving to my last slide. Or well, last but one. I should just put one in at the end, haven't you? <laughs> This doesn't solve your problem of learning process. This just gives you the database analysis of the jigsaw puzzle. Yeah? It's only one part of this jigsaw puzzle. <coughs> In parallel to that, we've, we're doing a lot of other stuff. We're setting management expectations across what we expect of leaders in four or five different areas, and one of them is about incident investigation. As a leader, we expect you to be able to do that. Yeah? We're running a leadership culture change in terms of how do you lead and what to do with that, and that's leadership workshops we're planning to run that, say, this is what you will need to do. But when you come out of a leadership workshop, so I need to do something different about that, oh, and then this is expectations I need to do, and oh, the database is there, then you, you, you create an environment where all the things you need to be able to achieve it are in place. And it's an awful lot of hard groundwork to get all of those into place. Don't imagine any of these things are easy. And I'd have put a few more of things on the jigsaw puzzle, but I couldn't find a clip art with more than four pieces of jigsaw puzzle <laughs> that I could do. So that's the only reason I had to put etc. up there, because I could have added a few more. But I was struggling to find the right piece of clip art. But it's about developing the capability, not only to do the inputting, as you can see. 60% of the stage, we still don't know what the human error is, because we don't quite understand it, the inputting of it. But it's work we need to do. Yeah? Capability to do the analysis. Getting our own people to go, oh, yeah, we need to do this and that. We can do, A, we can do it, yeah, and B, we want to do it. There's another issue that we've still got to find. Yeah. Creating the culture and the questions is that leaders start to ask for this information. 
Yeah, and that's about setting the expectations and setting the leadership stuff. It's the next stage in this journey that we're going on. Yeah, and then when you start using that management information, yeah, and guess what? The quality of the input will start improving because people start talking about. So I would say we're probably a third of the way through the journey at the moment. Yeah? Third of the last year, we said 10%. Read that 10%. Read, read out 10 <laughs> yeah. We've got the foundations in place, and we're building the brick course at the moment. And that's, about, that's where we're at in terms of this journey at the moment. Yeah. Um, but we do have the capability yeah, to use it. The Leeds 2 course guide that we use to program it's a very simplistic approach. It's not really brilliant. It doesn't do a load of great stuff. But it does give you the most common least to and caused by that there is there. And it allows you to have fixed classifications. Yeah? If you're doing a really difficult instrument that's quite complex and you're using a multiple tree on that one, it's a great guide to push you in the direction. But when you're literally only doing one course of line, if you think about it, on that stuff, we're only doing one course of line into the database at the moment. But one times 20,000 instances, 6,000 of instance. Yeah? starts to give you a picture of the different incidents. Um, it's published. It's another of these free of charge resources that you can download as a PDF, yeah, if you wish to. Um, it's structured with, what it's structured is on one side you have the preconditions and on the other side you have the underlying causes and you basically have a green, red, amber matrix that says, hey, these two go together, these might and these don't. All we've done is program and bring stuff in. Any questions on that? And as Stuart's keeping me absolutely on four o'clock because he, he has a high tech video link. See, I, I don't want it to sound like I'm the devil's advocate here, Tony. It's very interesting. Um, I've, I've, sorry, Lisbeth Holberg, yeah. I'm an independent uh, lead investigator. So I work with uh, many different clients. And a lot of them make attempts in this, um, but stop because they get invalid data. So they don't trust the data uh, when it comes to the data for the underlying courses. Um, I'm sure you've given it some thought here. You say you were 30% there. Have you, have you tested the validity no. of the data? Oh, absolutely so, not. Um, at the moment, I, I'm, we're, we're only 40% of the stage on the immediate causes where people can actually feel confident to yeah. put any, da any data in. Yeah. Whether that's right or wrong, it's another question. 60% of it, they don't even know where it is. Mm. But if you start using the data, yeah, yeah you, agree. you do. Uh, and that's the key, is you yeah. start using the data. Get people comfortable with putting human error failure data in and actually understanding what it needs. But use that data, and then you'll get better data in. But your alternative is, uh, actually, let's not have any, you need to go back to our previous system, which you can see the underlying cause data we put from that, which says, um, there's nothing to match your system. Yeah? So I say, it's a journey to go through. And it's not just about management information. It's management information, it's getting the culture, it's setting expectations, it's building people's capability to think in this barrier-based approach, both from our VHC profession, but also line managers to have <coughs> conversations. We have a very long way to go with those areas at that point. Yeah? But it's the city we have started the journey in a logical fashion. Round of applause for Tony.